uh, topic today is cardiac genetic conditions in athletes. My name is Niklas. Uh, I'm CEO at our census, but for the next uh, 45 minutes, I'll be your host and uh, guide you through this webinar. Uh, we have a super exciting topic today. I'm very glad we will be joined later by, uh, by Ola, my colleague. And uh, I'm talking to you from our head office, or not head office, but from our office in Berlin. Uh, Ola will be joining from our head office in Rostock. Uh, but I'm also glad to see that we have, what is it, almost 200 participants from uh, all over the world. I see from Saudi Arabia, uh, Pakistan, US to Germany. It's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, thank you for taking your time. And uh, I will make sure that you enjoy the next 45 minutes. So um, before we get started and before we go straight into the topic, I'd like to give you a short introduction to encourage you to ask questions. So you will see this functionality, the Q&A at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Whenever you have some questions, uh, feel free to open it up, type in your question. And once you click send, this message will be delivered to us. And um, Ola and uh, also my colleagues, they will take their time. They will answer your questions. We will have enough time after the presentation to also go through it in more detail. So uh, whenever you have it, send it and it will pop up. We will also share all these questions with you at the end. Everything has been answered. So you have access to it after this event as well. Perfect. Uh, I guess straight to it. So let me introduce you for today's speaker, uh, Dr. Volas Kahina. Uh, welcome very much. She's the Senior Director of uh, Clinical Programs here at our census. Uh, she's a lecturer in biology and chemistry and did her PhD at the Hans Knoll Institute in Germany. Uh, she was the Director of Clinical Studies at Centrogene, uh, at a rare disease company also founded by Professor Dr. Arndt Ross, our founder here at our census as well. And now since 2021, we are super happy to have her as the Senior Director of Clinical Programs at our census. And uh, I don't think there would be any better person to give this introduction to, uh, to for this webinar than, uh, than yourself, Ola. So you are very welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Nicholas, for a great introduction. And I'm um, very happy that lots of you join. And now I will uh, start with my uh, lecture. Okay, so uh, today uh, in our next webinar, uh, we will talk about cardiac genetic conditions in athletes. Okay, so cardiovascular diseases. So most cardiovascular diseases arise from risk factors such as tobacco use, uh, obesity, uh, physical inactivity, harmful use of alcohol, and also tobacco. However, recently, genetics is being more and more recognized as a major contributor, a uh, contribution factor of cardiovascular diseases. Cardiac sports are issues. Oh, for sure, we all know that exercise is beneficial for preventing cardiovascular diseases. However, physical activities in individuals with cardiac conditions can lead to such dramatic events as sudden death. And athletes, known as finest individuals in our society, apparently carry a higher risk of sudden cardiac death. Cardiac conditions that cause sudden cardiac deaths in athletes may happen, unfortunately, without any warning symptoms. And the first symptom of a cardiac condition could be sudden cardiac deaths. And this is uh, pretty actually terrible. Their diagnosis of um, cardiac conditions in sportsmen is a bit difficult. For example, interpretation of ECG in athletes is complicated as exercise and really a lot of exercises are associated with ECG findings, but are not really pathologic. They are just characteristics for this athlete group. And due to exercises, there are some physiological heart adaptations as prolongation of QT interval, left ventricular hypertrophy and left and right ventricular dilation occur. And these adaptation are also features of heredity diseases and that leads to extreme challenges in diagnosis, heart conditions in athletes. Therefore, genetic testing, early genetic testing in athletes is crucial for early diagnosis and prevention of severe symptoms as sudden cardiac death, as with genetic testing, 
we can diagnose individual even before symptoms start. And that would be an alien indicator to diagnose and prevent the conditions. Epidemiology of um, heart diseases, uh, it is known that every year more than 70 million people uh, die uh, due to the sudden cardiac death. And this is approximately 25% of all deaths worldwide. The prevalence of sudden cardiac deaths in general population is 1.3 in 100,000 individuals. However, the incidence of sudden cardiac deaths in athletes is extremely higher and it varies due to the literature, uh, different literature sources, but it's to up to one in 3,000 and on average it is one in 50,000. And sudden cardiac death is the leading cause of death among sportsmen. And the main cause of sudden cardiac death uh, is genetics. And there are two groups of diseases that um, I will mainly focus on today are uh, tenoloprosis. They account of 30% of uh, uh, causes of sudden cardiac death and cardi cardiomyopathies, 23% of uh, sudden cardiac deaths. Uh, there are uh, various types of hereditary cardiovascular diseases. And we will focus today on cardiomyopathies, uh, cardiac channelopathies, and aortopathies. So cardiomyopathies, here you see on the left side a structure of the normal healthy heart. And then moving forward, you see dilated cardiomyopathy. When you see in the middle, there is a scening of cardiac muscle walls and increased diastolic ventricle volume. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is exactly the opposite. So we see the sickening of the car uh, cardiac muscle wall and decreased diastolic ventricular volume. And there are also arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathies. We have defects in des uh, desmosomes, and these are areas on the surface of heart muscles, uh, heart muscle cells, which link cells together. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathies uh, uh, is the most prevalent uh, genetic cardiac conditions. And the prevalence is one to 200 till one to 500. And hypertrophic cardiomyopathies are caused by pathogenic variants, so-called mutations in genes that account for structural components of cardiac muscle. So these are uh, genes encoding for proteins uh, structures as actin, tropomyosin, myosin, and troponin. So, and pathogenic variants in these genes that are also presented here in the slides account for 60% of hypertrophic cardiomyopathies. And all um, these genes, mutation in these genes have uh, autosomal dominant inheritance mode, meaning this uh, one pathogenic variant is enough uh, to cause uh, the disease. Interestingly, uh, hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathies can happen not only due to the mutation in the uh, genes encoding for structural components on the heart, but there are also metabolic diseases as Danone disease, uh, Fabry disease, Pompe disease, also PRKAG2 glycogen storage cardiomyopathy. These are metabolic disorders. So uh, the pathogenic variants in these metabolic genes are causing to also such um, a symptom as cardiomyopathy. And there is also heredity transferrin related amyloidosis uh, when we have a pathogenic variant in the TTI gene coding for transferrin and this leads to accumulation of amyloid protein. And this also causes cardiomyopathy. So clinical manifestation of cardiomyopathy vary, but uh, the most terrifying that uh, a person can stay asymptomatic for a long period. And the first presenting symptom might be sudden uh, death. Um, and the diagnosis uh, of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is delayed and can happen uh, from birth uh, till uh, 80 years of age. And the average diagnosis uh, is around 39 years of age. So before, as soon as the sportman was diagnosed with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, it was a recommendation to exclude 
and athletes for further sport activities. But currently, there are new guidelines from um, Cardiac European Cardiac Association uh, published in 2020, where there is really an individual approach to each athlete uh, carrying a pathogenic um, variant in um, genes, uh, mutation in which can cause hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And there is a shared making decision between an athlete together with cardiologist, where individually all uh, the clinical uh, symptoms have to be checked and uh, as such factors as the presence of symptoms and presence of resting or inducible left ventricular outflow tract pressure gradient obstruction during exercise, the hemodynamic blood pressure response to exercise, and the presence of resting um, exercise and use arrhythmias. Meaning this, if all this lies in an optimal range, it doesn't mean that the sportman has to be excluded from the sports, no. Uh, in case it lies in the optimal range, the sportman can still proceed, but um, just has to be specially monitored to avoid such a severe conditions as sudden cardiac death. Uh, the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy has various type of treatment, and therefore an early diagnosis is extremely important, as with current available uh, treatment, also affordable, um, their terrifying symptoms can be prevented. So the first part is medication. There were various types of medication, like, for example, beta blockers, uh, which are directed to a uh, slow heartbeat uh, triggering by, uh, for example, adrenaline, also other uh, types of drug that help to slow a uh, rapid heartbeat or allow blood vessels to relax and open, diuretics well known to reduce volume of circulating blood, and also anticoagulants that are known to prevent clotting. And this is extremely important to know uh, the course of uh, the disease, the course of the mutation, as I have mentioned before, in case of metabolic diseases, uh, which also lead to hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, there is a specific treatment, causative treatment as enzyme replacement therapy for Fabry disease and Pompe disease. So it's extremely important to know the exact diagnosis in order to start a proper causative treatment to prevent uh, severe uh, symptoms that might occur without a special treatment. It is very important that currently the device as implantable cardioverter defibrillator can be implemented uh, and then again, uh, it's preventing severe symptoms. And the absolute indication for implantable cardioverter uh, defibrillator is uh, uh, sudden cardiac death survivors, for sure. Then we, um, the ICD is implanted, and uh, the next case uh, will almost 0% uh, that it will take place, sudden cardiac death, and consideration as unexplained syncorp, exercise induced hypertension, sickness of ventricular wall, as you see also on the right side, more than 30 millimeters, or um, sudden cardiac death family uh, history, also genetic diagnosis, and then implantable cardio defibrillator is implanted, and this is uh, for sure a prevention method. Or there are some surgical treatment that need to be carefully investigated as ventricular my myectomy, mitral valve replacement, and heart transplant. And as you see on the right side, so ventricular myectomy, so the pieces of our cardiac muscle will be deleted in order to have uh, inside higher volume. And here now uh, we see uh, and uh, actually set examples where well-known sportmen uh, were diagnosed with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, but only afterwards uh, sudden death uh, happened and they didn't survive. So uh, these players, as uh, Reggie Lewis, an American professional basketball player, Mark Vivian Feuer, Cameroonian professional football player, and Hungarian Miko Speer, Hungarian uh, football player, they all uh, were diagnosed postmortally with hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy. And what is really crucial here that hy hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is an important contributor to sudden cardiac death in young athletes. 
but it is super critical to know that these uh, sleds had not been previously diagnosed, which resulted in their deaths. Because as you have seen before, the earlier their diagnosis is established, and for sure, if genetics is the best way to have their earlier diagnosis, then the preventive measurements as medication or implantable cardiovascular defibrillator or some surgical information can be taken to prevent such terrifying conditions. And here we see an example of Jared Butler, an American professional basketball player that was diagnosed with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Uh, per now, the careful decision together with doctor was taken and he's asymptomatic and uh, also taken preventive measurement led him to further still play uh, basketball. So here an early diagnosis is a really nice example. And there are a lot of uh, committees that really carefully individ uh, uh, characterize each case individually. And it's extremely important to know what, that what level of activity is safe for patient with cardio, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy uh, is a question, but it is certain that sitting on the couch is a wrong exercise prescription. So uh, it has to be carefully evaluated and for sure for sportsmen is extremely important when they are doing their career and they are diagnosed with disease, really to see it not as a stop of career, but as a shared main, uh, as a shared decision together with doctor and to obtain preventive measurement and to keep proceeding with sports. Uh, and there was a really wonderful study just recently published where 37 well-known sportsmen were diagnosed with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and then uh, implantable cardiovascular defibrillator was implanted. And they were monitored for over two years. And what is extremely exciting that there were no incident of physical injury or failure to terminate arrhythmia and for sure uh, no uh, sudden cardiac death event. So they are uh, wonderfully proceeding their career. And uh, with diagnosis, everything is start and prevention can take place. So the advantage of um, early genomic diagnosis in cardi uh, cardiomyopathy is for sure that an early genomic diagnosis uh, can provide an indicator to start early clinical investigation of asymptomatic uh, individuals resulting in proper clinical characterization and to monitor what is the best way uh, to prevent uh, symptoms. Also, it enables to start early treatment medication or implantable device to prevent uh, symptoms or slow down the symptoms they might occur. And if uh, disease is correctly diagnosed and we have a metabolic disease, as Fabio Pomper, we have a directive causative enzyme replacement therapy, or also if it's a, uh, another disease, translucent related amyloidosis, uh, then uh, they are therapy that uh, removes um, these amyloids from the cells is also well known and there are various pharma companies that uh, produce this treatment. Uh, when we talk about cardiac channelopathies, this is the second group that I would like to highlight today. So cardiac channelopathies are coming from pathogenic variants in genes encoding for cardiac uh, ion channels. And clinical presentation is life threatening arrhythmias and also sudden cardiac death. And from well known group of diseases, there are long QT syndrome, Brugada syndrome, allele repolarization syndrome, and short QC syndrome. So example uh, of uh, long QT syndrome, uh, so we see on the right side, so we have a prolongation of QT interval uh, that is presented on the right side. Uh, the prevalence is a one in 2000, and it also have an autosomal uh, dominant inheritance mode. And uh, this disease happens when pathogenic variants, mutation uh, take place uh, in a gene that code for, card, uh, code for cardiac ion channels. And the most common and less common are presented here, the genes. So um, the prevention of sudden cardiac death, uh, uh, the symptom that is coming from long QT syndrome can be uh, again taking place in case, in case the patient is diagnosed at the earliest possible moment, 
there's avoidance of uh, QT prolonging medication. Also, uh, the electrolyte level has to be carefully controlled so that there are no electrolyte abnormalities. And there are some genotype specific triggers, for example, uh, sportsmen with long QT syndrome one, uh, they should avoid uh, really um, swimming for long distances and long QT syndrome do loud noises, because that can trigger sudden cardiac death. And this is extremely important to know uh, the proper genotype of the individual. And also the early treatment is and probation taking place as beta blockers and also implantable cardioverter defibrillator and uh, left cardiac sympathetic uh, denervation, uh, uh, denervation as well. Uh, and this intervention uh, can um, stop symptoms from developing. Um, this is a very great example of a, a sportswoman, uh, Dana Vollmer, with long QT syndrome. So she's American competitive swimmer, and uh, she won uh, five times gold medal at the Olympic Games. And uh, she was diagnosed with long QT syndrome at the age of 15. And uh, then uh, she had uh, shared make, uh, she did a decision together with uh, her leading uh, doctors uh, to implant a uh, defibrillator. And that led uh, to, uh, had to continue her career and really to uh, proceed with her sports uh, records and obtaining uh, five gold medals at the Olympic Games. Uh, it is important that uh, current guidelines are more and more individual and take into account uh, genetic diseases. And there is a wonderful study uh, published uh, with a return to play, uh, play uh, for athletes uh, diagnosed with genetic diseases, uh, including long QT syndrome. And what they have done, uh, they have uh, monitored uh, more than uh, almost 500 athletes with long QT syndrome asymptomatic and with implantable cardio defibrillator. Uh, there were two groups uh, during 20 years follow-up period and extremely important that no mortality event took place. Um, there was one non-lethal cardiac event, which is roughly about 6% uh, when calculated and um, cardiac event rate was 1.16 uh, uh, non-lethal events per 100. So optimally treated athletes when long QT syndrome are able to return to competitive sports with a low rate of uh, breakthrough cardiac events. So the advantage of early genomic diagnosis in cardiac uh, channelopresis is for sure to um, when the diagnosis is known, the detailed clinical investigation can be planned and uh, the special medication can be avoided. For example, the ones that are, uh, uh, avoid long QT prolonging uh, medication. Also the correct balance of electrolytes has to be uh, considered and avoid the genotype specific triggers and preventive measurements can be taken so that such a dramatic events as cardiac deaths will not take place. Uh, talking about aortopathies, uh, aortopathies are diseases that affect aorta, and here we see on the uh, right side uh, their uh, physical examples of aortopathies. Uh, there are various group of diseases as familiar thoracic aortic aneurysm and dissection, Lois Diaz syndrome, Marfan syndrome, and Ellis Danlos syndrome, where, uh, where mainly connective tissues are affected. And here we have an example of familiar thoracic aortic aneurysm and dissection. It's again uh, inherited in autosome dominant mode. The prevalence is uh, five, 10, uh, from five to 10 and 100,000. And uh, genes are depicted here, uh, genes encoding for uh, proteins of extracellular matrix, smooth muscles, or transforming growth factor B. So pathogenic variants in this gene uh, course this disease. There are also uh, important advantages of genomic diagnosis as monitoring on a regular basis aorta size with a known invasive method, ECOR, 
preventive treatment as beta blockers and allergic surgery. And these measurements can be taken in order to present, for example, the rupture of aorta. And here we have uh, examples of sportsmen uh, that uh, were diagnosed with Marfan syndrome. For example, Isaiah Orstein, an American uh, former professional basketball player. So he was diagnosed in 2014. Uh, and in 2016, he was given return to play approval. And he kept playing until 2021. And really famous American swimmer, Michael Peps, that uh, won uh, 28 um, uh, medals at the Olympic Games. And um, he was also considered to have Marfan syndrome. Uh, but here we also see a nice example where a shared mate decision was done and um, the return to play was carefully evaluated. So current guidelines, European Society of Cardiology uh, have uh, collected the evidence that sportsmen with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, long QT syndrome, also from channelopathies, Brogada syndrome, uh, there is an evidence that they should be considered or may be considered or to return to play. This has to be carefully evaluated, but it's definitely a big breakthrough so that everything is taken individually and the correct genetic diagnosis for sure is extremely important. So uh, with our uh, product, My Life Heart, we are able to address all these genetic diagnoses. So we are able to um, collect biological sample. In our case, it's saliva, then uh, bring it to Germany. In Germany, we will uh, extract DNA, uh, whole genome sequencing will be performed. And then all these genes that were mentioned and that lead to cardiac genetic conditions will be analyzed. And then in case the positive report is issued, the preventive measurements can be taken at earliest uh, possible moment and there will be no risk of sudden cardiac death uh, event. So this is just to highlight that there are more than 450 cardiac genes that we analyzed based on whole genome sequencing. Uh, and sportsmen with un undiagnosed cardiac genetic uh, disease uh, can check themselves and then they will know uh, and exclude genetic disease. And uh, it is all based on whole genome sequencing. This I have already mentioned. So we sequence the whole genome, but just analyze uh, cardiac genes. And the process is extremely easy going. So um, the saliva is collected, the sample is delivered to Germany, DNA isolation is performed, sequencing is done, and then in 20 working days, we're able to see the result if the report is negative or positive, and if positive, for sure the genetic counseling is performed, including the available treatment, next clinical investigations that are necessary, and um, this is all documented in a medical report. And uh, just to sum up uh, the presentation uh, that a prevention of uh, sudden cardiac death in sport is extremely important. The proper cardiovascular screening has to take place. Uh, the genomic testing of athletes so that all uh, mutations can be covered. The use of implantable cardio defibrillator um, is essential in diagnosed athletes. The drastically decline of their Performance enhancing, performance enhancing medication. And it is important uh, that the present of, uh, presence of sudden cardiac death rescue teams at the place of sports event and the placements of automatic external defibrillators is taking place so that all uh, gain can be monitored and in case of needed prevention measurements can be taken. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. You, you get an applause from me, Ola. Thank you very much. As always, super exciting. And uh, I'm also glad, uh, I see I'm not the only one in finance cycling, but we had quite some questions in the Q&A uh, section. And I would like to encourage you also, those who have raised their hand, please write down your question here. Um, Dr. Ola Skreina will take her time, go through the questions and answer them um, with you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I'm very happy to answer all the questions. The ones that I don't manage, we will also address online. So you also can uh, um, contact us online. 
So I see a first question uh, from uh, Egypt. How professional sportsmen can do Arsensus genomic testing, focusing on risk related to sport activities? Uh, thank you very much. So that can be done in an easy way uh, together with a doctor or a sportsman directly can exactly uh, order the product online. Uh, this uh, consists of a simple buckle swap. The sample is taken, is a very easy non-invasive procedure. So no blood needed, can be done at home easily. We don't need any additional phlebotomies there. And then for sure, uh, if there are no symptoms or any family history or clinical symptoms, it can be easily documented in our platform. And then the sample, uh, we organize a pickup. And in Germany, we do DNA extraction, perform sequencing, and then we are able to check all, all the cardiac genes and then see if there are pathogenic or likely pathogenic variants. Uh, and then we will directly report it. And moreover, that um, every three months we perform an updated report because there might be that the new gene is discovered or the new treatment was described. So we stay in a constant dialogue and we perform genetic counseling both to uh, the uh, customer and also to the physician. Thank you. So, um, the next question I see from Pakistan. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm aware that you were going to Pakistan on the 26th of March. And could you please share the activities that will be done in Pakistan? All right, thank you very much. Yeah, you're very active in Pakistan, primary in diagnostic of genetic diseases. But currently, we also opened our preventive sport activities. And together with Mr. Stefan Blöcher, from Germany, he will accompany us that time. We will organize a testing of uh, hockey and cricket players in Pakistan. And uh, we are also very happy if you write us directly to share with you the exact agenda. Thank you very much. Uh, there I see a question also from Professor from Pakistan. Will it be realistic to make genetic testing reports compulsory in all uh, men, women during um, recruitment? This is a very good question because per now we see that sportsmen are the finest society and they go through various medical interventions and checkups and they are regularly uh, check up several times per year, but we still see such drastic events as sudden cardiac death. And this is due to the not compulsory genetic testing. So genetic testing is not standard of care of check for the sportsman. And you are totally right that that for sure has to be implemented. And when it's just a matter of time, but uh, we know that genetic diagnostic uh, and uh, to be actually diagnosed, diagnosed with genetic disease is not that terrifying. It's better to know in the beginning because preventive measurement can be tested and uh, it would be great to implement genetic testing with a, as a standard of care test for sportsmen. And we are also uh, talking to various sports organizations and we already started it as a trial but for future, the plan would be also to test all of sportsmen. Okay, uh, what kind of sports has resulted in more sudden cardiac deaths? Uh, thank you very much. So there are various publication, but it's clearly seen from statistics that majority of sudden cardiac deaths happens during basketball and um, a lot of uh, epidemiological studies show that it's basketball followed by football. And unfortunately, a lot of diagnoses take place uh, post-mortally when autopsy takes place. And then it was confirmed that it was um, majority where hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, but also uh, long QT or short QT syndrome, but they were uh, diagnosed then having the genetic material afterwards. And unfortunately, sportsmen were diagnosed only after that preventive sudden death syndrome uh, already took place. Okay. 
Uh, thank you very much. So there are lots of questions. Um, so why do, uh, okay, I see a question also from uh, India. So why do um, uh, sudden cardiac death happens more often in sportmen than in general population? So it's a very good question because um, basically uh, general population is can be also affected with uh, genetic heart diseases as a sportsman as well. But sportsmen, in addition to that, have high adrenaline levels. And these adrenaline levels actually also cause um, the activation of pathways that can already, when the uh, patient carries a variant, a pathogenic variant, and that can trigger uh, that drastic event more often compared to a general population. Uh, the second question I also see from uh, India, and uh, this is very interesting. So what's about atherosclerosis? Can it be genetically determined? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, we didn't touch uh, the point of um, heredity lipid disorders in this presentation, but you are totally right that um, atherosclerosis can also come, uh, which, which leads to sudden death syndrome as well, can also come from genetic diseases. And there, are, there is a disease known as uh, hypercholesteremia, and there are three genes um, involved in lipid metabolism, pathogenic variant in which uh, can cause this hypercholesteremia. And for sure, uh, these genes are also checked in sportsmen and need to be followed as well in order to exclude uh, if the pathogenic mutation are in this uh, lipid metabolism gene, that lipid recombination takes place, which leads to atherosclerosis and which in the end uh, leads to um, sudden cardiac death. Okay, there is a question from New Daily uh, about a daughter who uh, played uh, tennis and then um, she became unconscious and her pulse stopped beating for a while. So uh, thank you very much to sharing this uh, information. Uh, for sure, uh, such symptoms need to be taken extremely, extremely careful. And we would definitely recommend uh, to do the genetic testing in order to exclude genetic condition so that we can be really sure about that. Okay, uh, we have a question from professor from Georgia and um, it is about uh, diagnosis of um, uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathies and which test method would be prefer whole exome sequencing or whole genome sequencing. Yes, uh, for sure there is a lack of testing and um, definitely any genetic test would be of a benefit in case nothing was done, but we for sure would like immediately to do whole genome sequencing because with whole genome we cover all cardiac genes, but not only um, exons, but also introns. So there are intronic mutation that can lead to their uh, cardiac disease and doing the whole um, genome would allow us to cover all possible variants. And this is the latest currently available technology. And uh, for sure, it's not that now distributed, but currently we are able to do um, from the sample arrival to medical reports, 20 working days is almost like the time for the panel and we're improving. And um, we would definitely recommend whole genome sequencing as well. Okay, there are a lot of uh, there's also a question about whole exome sequencing. Uh, if it is enough for diagnosis, we would again recommend uh, whole um, genome sequencing as uh, that is also covering also intronic variants, also structural recombination, also copy number variants with a higher sensitivity than whole exome. And uh, whole genome per now has the highest diagnostic yield. Uh, then the next question, uh, 
Would you suggest to uh, every Esla to be tested? Yes, um, we for sure suggest not to every Esla, but for everyone to be tested. I have, for example, also done my uh, whole genome sequencing and uh, that was very exciting uh, to understand if I have any preventive diseases. And again, uh, we only report um, the diseases that have a treatment implication. So this is extremely important and for all type of population, but especially for sportsmen, whole genome sequencing with a proper medical interpretation is of a benefit, definitely. Okay, there is a very interesting question about uh, psychotherapist and how can they prevent the sudden cardiac um, uh, death in sportsmen. So for sure, uh, getting a diagnosis that can be uh, a sensitive moment, but together with the genetic counselor decision and explaining, as you have seen, for um, currently uh, the medicine is really developing and we have um, preventive treatment for such diseases. So it's important to explain to the patient this and also to explain to family members. Uh, it is extremely important when individual is tested, we offer screening for family members so that the whole family can get um, a shared decision and would not be afraid as sudden cardiac death can be prevented if we know in advance. So there are a lot of a lot of questions. Exactly one again from uh, Australia. Uh, is there a facility um, uh, for doing genomic testing only in Germany? No, we are active worldwide. So um, from any country, the test can be ordered, and we are also you also can contact us. We can also provide uh, pre-testing counseling and let you know what would be the best way for you uh, to obtain the test. Thank you very much, Ola. It's, uh, uh, I see there are a lot of questions. We also already wrote in the chat. We will make sure to answer all of them afterwards. And then the email, uh, which you all will receive with the email address you signed up for, we will also provide the answers. Um, do you want to pick one last one, Ola, to, to answer? Yeah, I'm checking a lot of questions. <laughs> Uh, so, um, yeah, I see also one, is there an effective uh, nutrition program for athletes with long QT syndrome? Okay, we'll take this last question. Uh, very important point because for a long QT syndrome, uh, metabolite um, optimal level is extremely sensitive and with proper metabolite uh, nutrition, it can be also taken at the first step of preventive measurement. So thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you very much for your time, Ola. Uh, it's a pleasure having you, a pleasure listening to you. Also see how you're answering these questions and uh, you can really tell you're an expert in this field. So it was a pleasure having you aboard as a speaker. Now, Thank you very much. Um, let me wrap up uh, this webinar. Um, I will uh, just keep it short, keep it brief, share two more things with you before we stop it. So if you enjoyed it today, uh, I'm super happy to invite you to the two next webinars which are coming up. One is on the 23rd of uh, February. It's with uh, our CEO and founder, Professor Dr. Arndt Rolfs. It's about unexpected diagnosis based on whole genome sequencing. And then we have another one coming up on the 9th of March uh, with Dr. Najim Ametziana. He's the Senior Director of Bioinformatics Research and probably the, the best person I could imagine at least to answer the question, finding the critical genetic needle in a 6 billion gene, uh, genome haystack. Um, you will also receive this information in an email um, afterwards, including the questions uh, which we did not have time to answer now. Uh, last but not least, um, we also have a certificate for uh, those who either would want an attending certificate or for doctors who um, uh, want to have a uh, CME certificate with the corresponding points. If you go to the chat at the lower part of your Zoom screen, you will find uh, the Arsensis account, which have published a link. If you click on this link, you will find this form. If you fill it out, um, we will then afterwards send you the certificate per se. Uh, lastly, um, 
in case you found it super interesting what we're talking about, I saw there were also some questions in the chat about um, uh, can we do this genetic testing uh, now already? If your doctor would like to work with your sensor products or if you're a sportsman and would like to get tested yourself, we're happy to provide you some answers, provide you also genetic free counseling. Uh, you can contact us via the link and via the email address posted in the chat as well. So last point from my side is a big thank you to everyone. It's exciting to see us. So the numbers of participants even uh, increased to almost 300. Uh, it's been an honor having you from all over the world and uh, hope to see uh, many of you in uh, two weeks. Thank you guys very much and uh, stay healthy.